It's not uncommon to have AI and machine learning confused as related terms. And on top of that, there are terminologies like deep learning and generative AI, which just compounds the difficulty in actually knowing the difference between all these terminologies. Let's start with AI. AI is a broad field that encompasses a lot of other subfields like robotics, vision, video generation, image generation, natural language, and more. And the field of AI actually goes back all the way back to 1940s, popularized by Alan Turing with his Turing test in 1949 when he proposed this idea. Can machines exhibit human-like behavior that is indistinguishable from a human? The AI industry is now well past its 75-year-old Turing test, and we're now into a completely different era entirely. You see, as the name suggests in AI, the whole idea behind is to demonstrate intelligence in an artificial way. In other words, we're trying to mimic intelligence using whatever methods that we can. And one of the methods that we do this is by using what's called machine learning. And you might be wondering, how is machine learning different than artificial intelligence? Machine learning emerged as a concept in 1959 when AI researchers had figured out a peculiar way of demonstrating intelligence. Instead of didactically or explicitly programming the machine by rules, meaning if this happens, do this, and if that happens, do this, in a very deterministic way, they suggested that maybe we just let the machine learn the rule itself from the data. And this shift made a huge change in how we viewed intelligence entirely. So now the shift went from trying to create a complex rule-based system to a much different way where you first create a model architecture, then let the model architecture learn from the data. And new models and new ideas emerged as a new way for the machine to learn until recently, around early 2010s, when a new revolution happened called deep learning. You see, until recently, a lot of AI systems were bottlenecked by hardware limitations. Meaning, even if they could come up with complex neural networks back then, even the most advanced computers in the 80s and 90s would not be able to train the model in large sizes. But as the internet grew more, which allowed for more training data to be produced, and hardware in compute also improved, a complete revolution in adopting deep neural networks started to emerge as a way to model intelligence. So the AI field started as early as the 1940s, and we had machine learning emerge as a concept in the late 1950s, and finally, the popularization of deep learning in the early 2010s now paved the way for a completely new way of how we can use this more advanced knowledge. One of the ways that we are able to leverage this knowledge was by using what's called generative AI. And as the name suggests, instead of using the AI's intelligence to chat and classify things, we were now able to use its intelligence as a way to do creative work by letting it generate what's called a novel data. Novel here means new and original. This was a completely different way of using AI because until this point, AI was largely used in tasks like translation, where you can take a sequence in one language and translate to another language, or even facial recognition and basic speech recognition use cases. But creating original materials was something that was completely new. Now, we have AI models that can generate videos where we can ask AI model like VO and Sora to generate original videos from text, and we also have models like Stable Diffusion and DALI where you can ask the AI to generate a completely novel image. The AI industry, as you can see, has matured significantly and understanding concepts like machine learning, deep learning, and generative AI gives you a deeper appreciation for how it's changing the society and giving us new ways to get things done.